There we go. I think we're live now on Facebook. Let's stop for a second. But uh, yeah, welcome guys. Um, so we are uh, in um, the third part of our spiritual understanding series. And uh, yeah, I'm excited. That I, I've got a lot this week, a lot of, a lot of goodies to share. So I hope you're ready. Um, if you want, you can get a Bible or um, feel free to to join us here, engage. Um, it's going to be good. Today's class, we're going to be talking about what does it feel like to have spiritual understanding? <laughs> so we're going really into the experiential. That's been a lot of what I wanted to do the last couple of weeks. I just, you know, laid the foundation of spiritual understanding, talking about how it's in Jesus Christ, in us, um, and how uh, the mindset on the flesh is death, but the mindset in the spirit is life and peace, and and why that's important. Why why does it matter to walk in the spirit? Um, what's the difference between just intellectual understanding and spiritual understanding? We're we're basing these uh, this spiritual understanding series on Colossians one nine, where Paul prayed that. Uh, they would be enriched with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And uh, that is not a prayer of lack. Uh, You are filled with it, but that you would understand what that is. Um, And not just with your intellect, but with your whole being, with engaging every part of your being to understand this fullness to, uh, in other ways you can say, just to be aware of the Holy Spirit in you. Um, to be aware of Christ as you. We know that message. It's amazing. The gospel is incredible. But what these sessions are about, um, and the whole transformation sessions, uh, heart behind it is to experience, to experientially walk out the fruit and the fullness of of what you already have and who you already are. So so when Paul was praying in Colossians 1, 9, he's not asking for something that they don't already have or that they're not already filled with, but that they would simply understand that they would be um, like he prays in Ephesians 3, which is what I was trying to pray during our prayer meeting, <laughs> uh, that they would come to know the love that passes knowledge. So, <laughs> And I love that too because you know even that scripture in Ephesians 3 it reveals that this is... It's a it's a knowledge, but it's beyond what we thought was knowledge, <laughs> and that is the Holy Spirit. That is spiritual understanding, spiritual knowledge, experiential knowing, the knowing um, that you have in the mind of Christ. Uh, there's you know seven billion people, or however many billions of people that think they know stuff, and yet they all disagree with each other. <laughs> But there is one Holy Spirit, um, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, that we all have uh, access to. And, and to live in that mind of Christ is our inheritance, it's our gift, it's our birthright, and it makes everything work. Amen. So, yes. So I'm excited about that. And, uh, I really, I want to dive in today. So, so we've been doing that the last couple of weeks, and uh, and today I'm a, you know, why not continue, and really go into an experiential place um, of describing. All we can do is attempt to put into words, really. Shuba uh, um, attempt to put into words the wordless, um, attempting to describe, but. Um, so as I already mentioned, this was week, it's like the third part of the series. We're talking about what does it feel like to have spiritual understanding? Or another way to say it is, what is it like living in the Holy Spirit? Really, like if, just to try to put, you know, we have a lot of scriptures that we'll look at. But then we want to put it, you know, I just want to describe what I've experienced. Um, which a lot of times I'm just teaching scriptures or doing teaching. But I really want to get experiential and point to, to be a pointer to realms that are available what all is available um and i'm coming as as well as a learner like i'm saying holy spirit what more can i experience 
I know I have it all. And that's the message that, that brings my heart to life to know that you've never left me in lack for a moment. You know, you're so good, but what, how can I experience this goodness and what all is there? And what does that feel like? And, and to describe this, you know, uh, we're doing recordings to describe this and you can maybe share this, the link once it's posted with people that are, I mean, there's so many people desperate for spiritual reality for we were made for way more than just the natural the natural is amazing we've been talking about that for some years now you know we're not trying to escape being human by being spiritual but at the same time we're not just being human we are divine and human at the same time and so what does that feel like what does it mean holy spirit so looks like a couple people are asking where the link is and stuff it's just on my facebook if you're a I don't, I don't know how that's working. Anyway, it's, it's just on my personal Facebook page. The, what, uh, what's going on right now? And then we'll post it later on YouTube and on Facebook. But. So, sweet. Um, so, I, I want to encourage us, man. What more can we experience? What, uh, what does it feel like? And so we're going to dive into that. I did want to, I just want to encourage us to keep looking for transformation testimonies as I've been calling it. Uh, I have one to share with you this week. There's cool stuff. Just keep looking um, in your life and watching because uh, this is, this is all about Jesus's heaven on earth reality showing up in ways where more than just you notice. (laughs) Uh, That's what I'm kind of sharing, saying as a transformation testimony. It's like, something that Holy Spirit has been doing to manifest Jesus's heaven on earth reality in more in ways where more than just one person notices, you know, um, it's all about all the cosmos feeling heaven on earth, experiencing, tasting, see every person. I believe every knee will bow and every tongue confess. Woo! And so um, my little testimony was uh, a, a friend shared last week. They were watching the class and they went into their first ecstasy. <laughs> and this is, a, this is a dude, a brother I've known for a while. And I was just like, I feel like you actually have been pretty whacked, bro. But he's like, dude, I've never been. Well, he was just laid out and immobilized in an ecstasy. And he said that was the first time that ever happened to him. So, I mean, this this is the glory, dude. This is like. We, I mean, this is going to become more and more normal. It's just we're sharing the gospel or talking about Jesus and people are just laid out in the ecstasies all over for the first time. So it's a lot of whack on that. So, um, and as I mentioned, we're going to start taking some people out on the streets here soon. So hit me up if you want to do that. Um, I got a couple more things I'm busy with this week, but I want to just make a regular time, man. I mean, it's just life. This is just where you're, you're living. You know, you don't need us to schedule it can't schedule heaven on earth anyways holy it's already here but uh yeah it's powerful anyway i'm just going to dive into the teaching um we're going to look at romans 8 i just want to read this and then we'll start sharing but uh romans chapter 8 verse 12 to 17 been kind of using romans 8 as a backdrop for these sessions uh or for this spiritual understanding series um romans 8 12. So then, brothers, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We'll just, I'll just stop there for now. But uh, So last week we just talked about like not, being, not having our minds set on the flesh, man, uh, which literally, I'm, I want to interpret it this way. I mean, in one sense that means not, um, we're not looking at our, ourself in the old identity and the sinful nature. We know we've been freed from that. Hallelujah. I mean, that's like a thousand sermons right there. It's a lot of glory. Just knowing that you're free from the sinful nature. But also, um, the mindset on the flesh is, you know, the flesh of the sinful nature got its root from just focusing on what our fallen perception perceived in the natural only. 
which happens to be where the average person seems to live their life most of the time. The, you know, the average person you meet on the street is literally only looking at their natural circumstances, which is why their moods are like a roller coaster and why their, you know, their decisions are not based on the full picture. And, and, uh, and so that's, but there's a lot of people even preaching a gospel that it's, it's only appealing to somehow the natural mind, you know, um, which is why, you know, the natural mind always wants a more of an explanation, more of an explanation. Please tell me, tell me the answer to this, but what about this? But what about this? But what about this? You know, and it's an endless, you know, cycle because the natural mind, it says it's hostile or the carnal mind, the mind that's set only on what you see in the natural with your fallen perspective cannot comprehend the things of God. As we were reading last again, first Corinthians, it's like, uh, it says, um, the spiritual man, I mean, we speak a wisdom, but only to those who are spiritual because so the spiritual man makes judgments about all things or sees like it has a completely different perspective and it can't be understood by those that aren't walking the spirit. So, which also gives you some freedom, you know, like, uh, it's okay if not everyone understands you, <laughs> that's normal. Um, it, it's not going to be normal forever. Like eventually every eye is going to see like we're talking about, but, um, we're not debtors to live that way, it says in Romans 8. If you live according to the flesh, you will die. If, you're just, if your mindset is on the natural and the natural circumstances all the time and that fall in perspective, that's where all the fruits of you know, sickness, poverty, suffering, and death all stem from. Whoa. But if you, by the Spirit, put to death the deeds of the body or recognizing that that's not who you are and therefore not living that way, then you have life and peace. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Um, holy. So, so the heart of this series, again, is to point us, instead of just looking in the natural circumstances, to begin to become at home with the spirit, at home with the unseen as well as the seen. Um, to be in the flow in heaven on earth together, to be in the flow in the Holy Spirit. And as we've talked about in the last couple of classes, not just walking in the spiritual, because there's a lot of really confusing and, and damaging um, quote unquote spiritual paths out there or people teaching spirituality, but we're talking about Holy Spirit with a capital S. Um, John says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day in the spirit, Holy spirit, not just looking around in the, in the spiritual realm, which could be as confusing as anything, um, but being led by Holy spirit through this realm, through all realms of life. So that's where the rest of this Romans eight comes, comes in as well. It's not, um, it's not just any spirit. It's not just becoming spiritual in the lowercase sense but it's becoming, um, verse 15, uh, walking in the spirit of adoption, walking in uh, the spirit that cries, Abba, Father, the spirit that's at home in the Trinity, the spirit that says, uh, 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 bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, that we're in the family of God. It's a, it's a healthy, safe, beautiful, protected environment. And that makes a big difference. Makes a big difference. If you're actually, I'll just say that like straight up, if you're out there exploring with all these different realms of spirituality, you will die just as much as you'll die being led by the flesh. Let's put it straight up. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm tired of seeing friends confused. <laughs> like, I don't want to see it anymore, man. Just we're talking about Holy Spirit of Abba Father. Huge difference. All right point taken we talked about that for the last two weeks too so so i just want to get into the meat of it man um what does it feel like what what can it be like i want to point to to greater experience and greater realms um that that everyone that's listening or anyone that's watching would be provoked or or your eyes would be open to maybe a new place a new part of um, of the body of Jesus, of, of who you're in. 
and or like I've described in times past, uh, in my father's house there are many rooms. I want to point to some of those rooms. Some of us are only familiar with one or two or three, but how many rooms are in the mansion of God? You know. Uh, so, but at, so as we dive in, I, I just want to say again, though, that the finished work of Jesus is still absolutely relevant in growing in the Spirit. Um, we want to point to these rooms. We want to point to walking in the depths and the heights. And yet, many spiritual people are trying to access realms of God by efforts, by new ways, interesting and cutting-edge techniques. Even though many will claim finished works, and they will say, they'll tell you all day that their techniques are not works. But you can always recognize works by stress, pressure, guilt, shame, lack of fun, lack of joy. If it's not easy, if it's not light to your spirit, if it's not uh, the spirit that cries Abba Father, or the, the, the spirit that already recognizes that you're a son and daughter, you're already there. The gospel is, again, that heaven is already here. It is finished. It is done. You are saved and safe because of Jesus. The world is being taken care of by Papa. Everything is going to remain more than okay. <laughs> the part that we play in this is simply for the joy and relationship of it all. Not to finish the job. Not to save the world. It's not like the world is going to die and go to hell if you don't figure out how to be spiritual. That's not what we're saying. <laughs> we talked about before, why is it important to grow in the Spirit? Well, because you want to be able to experience your full inheritance. You want to enjoy the full package. But it's not, um, it's not because you're going to uh, fail or be lost or anyone's going to be lost if they're not able to you know, flow in all of these things. It is finished. You are there. You're going to wake up to the fullness eventually. But... Why not just wake up now? Why not experience the full package now? So, um, so it is, you know, people fall on both sides of the coin sometimes. Like there's some guys that are literally like, I'm just a finished works dude. And they're like, it's all finished. It's all done. But they're never having any experiences with Holy Spirit anymore. And all they have is like some intellectual knowledge of that. That's cool. But that's, that's not like, I, I'm bored with it, to be honest with you. <laughs> like, people can talk about the finished works all day long, man, but if you're not getting whacked, dude, I'm just bored to tears because I was made for a full package. <laughs> like, I mean, it's interesting for a while, you know, it, it's part of the package, but, but uh, 1 Corinthians 14 says, uh, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual. Um, a lot of translations say earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, but if you look in the some of the most literal ones, the word gifts isn't there. It's just, I mean, I think gifts is obviously part of the spiritual, but it just says, uh, literally it says, pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual, um, especially that you may prophesy. And then the rest of the chapter goes on to describe other gifts and stuff, which we'll touch on today. But um, dude, if you, if you have, if you're like a, if you believe that you're perfect and everything's holy and, and the gospel, you know, you love the gospel, but you're never experiencing anything spiritual, then dude, that's just not what you're made for. Just say it that way. Experiencing the fruit of the gospel still matters to have an amazing, joyful, full, rich experience of life, man. And it, it'll be so much more attractive and healthy everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, dude. I mean, to walk in simply an intellectual understanding, you may as well be just having your mind set on the flesh because that's really the same realm that you're walking in there. Uh, it's just, it's, it's a, a focus on outward. But to move from the fullness of the invisible and visible working together in union in the person of Jesus has uh, uh, endless realms of joy and bliss and delight and health and and all the fruits of the spirit and all the gifts of the spirit. So, so there are surely many realms and facets, or as we're praying, faucets, <laughs> aspects, dimensions, manifestations, abilities, gifts, fruits, anointings, 
glories within the one Holy Spirit who lives in your belly. Uh, I mean, I, I didn't have this in my notes, but I just got to read Colossians 2 again, man. Uh, See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him who is the head of all rule and authority. Uh, just having a drink of that, man. Uh. The fullness of the Godhead dwelling bodily and you've been filled in him. <laughs> you cannot just walk around like some other dude that just learned a new piece of information. <laughs> uh, it's a little different, man. A little different. So there are many facets to walking in the spirit, but only one river, yet many streams within the one river. There are many realms within the spirit. It's all one, yet we're wanting to experience it all. So that is what we're talking about today. That's what I want to just point to. I just want to describe some things that I've experienced and, and uh, you know, open it up even if, if you know, if people want to share a couple of things that, from their own life. It, because our heart here is to is to say, it, it's like until people have seen a demonstration, they don't even know what you're talking about most of the time. It's like it's like even talking about church. A lot of people are like, man, there's so many problems with the church. It's like, okay, demonstrate me a new way to do it then, because that's what people are looking for. As soon as someone does it, then all of a sudden it like opens up for people to follow in that. It's like that's why I really don't care to just talk about all the problems and stuff. It's a, it's the same with Holy Spirit. People are like, man, there's not enough spirituality in the church. Awesome. Let's tell people what it could be like and let's show them. Let's live a, a, a something that they're like, that that is totally different and amazing and I want that. Like, If that's what it's like, now I'm open to it. I think there's people in the streets everywhere. There's people in the church. There's people all over the world that are just like waiting um, to see more than a sermon to see these realms so and I will say um, I wanted to mention this so many of us have begun tasting um, and I'm, I already kind of said this but I just want to emphasize we've begun tasting one aspect of Holy Spirit in our life or, or a few um, but there are so many there's just there's so many realms this is why it can be beneficial you know even someone like like jacob teetmeyer like who just travels around and goes to all these different you know groups and stuff um you know you may think jacob's a little whacked out for your taste or whatever but one thing i admire about jacob is that he's always uh uh honoring and recognizing these different realms even to the point of being willing to travel now some people get obsessed with that and it, it's not about you know even Jesus addressed in, I think it's Luke 17, it's not about the kingdoms over there, the kingdoms over there, and we need to run off to new places to find the kingdom. No, but like we've been talking about recently, the body of Christ is billions of people. We were even just praying about this. Unique things, and, and to, you know, being around them, and any of you who've, who've experienced this can testify if you're around someone that's walking in a certain glory, it, it often rubs off on you in a way that you can't even describe. And you're like, I knew about this before. Now being around this person walking in it, it's like it's all of a sudden it's happening for me just being around them. And I think that's because they are a part of you. Like God made it that way that we need each other. And we, you know, we and so I just, I love that. I want to keep encouraging that. Like whenever you meet someone, there's a realm um, that God has for you with them. And especially if they're walking in something powerful, you know, it's okay. Give yourself permission to just hang out with that. If they, if you want it, hang out with them for some time, you know, it's like, sometimes we feel bad. We're like, well, I know I have the fullness and I don't want to be a bother or anything. Like, I'm like, dude, if someone's walking in something that I want to see, dude, I will just go and like hang around them for hours, days, whatever. I've done trips, you know, like, I love it, man. I absolutely love it and encourage it. Not in a way where you're sensing lack, but in a way that you're honoring that that anointing and that gift and that, that realm so you can walk in it. So 
I say many in our group. Have, I mean, it's just being real. Like a lot of our group has has the like light, fun, joking, laughter, hilarity realm. <laughs> That's awesome. But there's so many other ones too. You know, um, I think a lot of times we'll start getting in the spirit, and everyone instantly goes to the laughing realm or the, or the joking realm, and those are good. Uh, but are there? What if there's other stuff that God wants to keep showing us? You know. I don't, it's not going to be against those gifts. It flows with those. So that, like some people will hear you say that and be like, well, there's always laughter in heaven. Absolutely. It's, it, it, it flows parallel, not in contradiction to that, you know? Uh, but I know some guys, it's like, I'm around them in the glory. All they can ever do is joke. I'm like, that's awesome. But you know, it's okay to like weep or like fall or just stand in awe or begin to, to pray or begin to read scriptures or, you know, walk in healing or there's so many things, you know, there's so many. And the one you're familiar with can often be the one you want to default to. But I want to just point. So that's, that's again, why I'm doing this. It's like, Hey, let's, I want to provoke us, encourage us. You know what? You can take as long as you want to wake up to the fullness, but let's man, let there's so much that you can have right now and you got it. And you're, it's all around you. Just look around. Take a look. You're used to looking to the right. Look to the left for a second. You know, you're used to looking over there. Look over there. You're used to exploring this part of your heart. There's a whole a thousand other parts of your heart, man. And this is what it's going to be like to see transformation. It's when the the sons and daughters come into the fullness. This is what all creation's longing for. It's like, uh, you know. This, we're just beginning to look into that realm of all creation where all, you know, the healing is coming to the physical, uh, you know, realms everywhere, you know, rivers manifest clean and, you know, species start getting restored. And I mean, we're just talking about, this is what we're pointing to. And so it's going to, it's going to take a, uh, an awareness of waking up to the fullness of all these realms together. So, so I just want to name some and just point out some realms here and then share some stories. But uh, uh, here's some realms that I have listed and feel free to call out some other ones as I, as I finish or write them out. If you're, if you're watching online, feel free to, to type, uh, you know, remind me. Cause I, I mean, there's endless realms, you know, um, shiggy, look at, look at, look at, look at, look at, so one of the realms is the power realm. I want to, I just want to point to that in the Holy Spirit is like, uh, there's a time when you just feel Abba, you feel the strength of God. You feel this ability, you feel this supernatural might. You can call it the spirit of might, or it's just the raw power of God. It's, it's, uh, you see a lot of evangelists flow in it. I just want to point to that. I want to say you can flow every one of you. If you can hear my voice, you can flow in the raw power of God. And like I mentioned before, if you want to see more of it, you can ask Holy Spirit to make you aware and also get around those people in the body of Christ that are walking in it. This is just wisdom, people. It's not, uh, I'm not saying you lack anything. Or you, I'm just pointing out to the, these realities. It's wisdom. So the power realm is, there's a lot of glory on it, man. Um, I've also noticed, uh, have you ever noticed just the tender, sweet, weeping, like the weepy love realm? <laughs> the tender, the soft, like the, uh, there's just that place, you know, um, within you that you have available. And it's that unconditional love. It's that love of the father, um, call it the father's blessing. The, the mother heart of God is a realm. I just want to point out that's in you, that's in Christ that you have, man. Ugh. The weepy, sweet love realm. Another realm, dude, is uh, that shining. I, I'm just trying to put words to the word list today. You know what I mean? Like that shining integrity and excellence. Like that excellent holiness that um, you can call it the spirit of excellence sometimes. Um, I, li- I like the word shining to describe it. There's, you know, there's a, it, it's that thing where like if you're, if you're working on a project, you know, you just do it like a hundred times better than anyone's ever done it before. You know, you can, you can create things that are done with such excellence or, or, it, you know, in dealing with, with friends and family, you just have a shining integrity, like an honesty, just a, there's just this absolute pure shininess to like, it's like, 
it, you know, it's just a realm, dude. I don't, I'm just pointing it out. Connected with that and like moving on. The high energy realm. There's a realm where you are supernaturally energized. Have you ever gotten so whacked you can't even sleep at night? Uh, I mean, honestly, there's a high energy realm in the Holy Spirit that I want to point out to people, dude, and say, my God. <laughs> um, I mean, the Father never slumbers nor sleeps, you know what I mean? Uh, there's, it's just this energization uh, of, of the Holy Ghost. I just want to point that out. On, on the same token and, and, at the, and seemingly on the flip side, there's the rest and absolute like peace and stillness realm as well. Uh, ugh, like, I mean, feel that in the glory for a second. There you are. There it is. It's just that place where you know that your efforts are absolutely not necessary. That you, just by you know being, without moving, without lifting a finger, are, are releasing the kingdom, are being God in the flesh, you know, with Christ. <laughs> There's an absolute peace that um, the world is going to be safe in the arms of our Father, you know and an absolute stillness that can come where you can sit. It's not a sleepiness even, you know. It's an absolute stillness where, you know, uh, at first I think in your walk, sometimes when you get quiet, you can. it's easy just to fall asleep. Or if you go into quiet prayer or if you're just reading the Bible, you know. I don't know if you are in those days or if you remember those days. But, uh, I mean, now I'm, I've walked in such an energy. If I'm sitting reading the Bible, I'm just energized. I, I can feel absolutely still and quiet. I can sit in silence for hours and not be sleepy, but I'm in the, a perfect stillness. Anyway, that's a realm, dude. <laughs> Connected with that is the is the abs- you know a place where you can't even move. I just wanted to point out the ligature realm, or you can call it being absolutely hammered drunk, which I'm feeling a lot right now of that. <laughs> but the slow moving. Uh, the snail's pace, if you try driving and it, well, good luck even getting in your car if you're in the heaviest, but sometimes you're getting it while you're driving and you've noticed you're going 15 miles an hour. And you, I mean, I've had times where I couldn't go more than like 15 while I was driving <laughs> or, uh, or buddies that, are, you know, we've heard of some of our friends getting like doctor's notes cause they would just go into absolute almost rigor mortis. You know what I mean? I don't know how else to say it. It's a realm, dude. It's, it's, there's a lot of glory on it. Um, that's all I even wanted to, that all I had in my list. Do you guys want to mention any other, other realms? Someone wrote dunamis power. Yeah, the power realm, dude. Bam, take it. Yeah, it's like Todd Bentley around there. What a dunamis on the dude. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep going. I don't care. <coughs> I just want to keep describing and just giving pointers of how it can feel to walk in Jesus' spirit. Um, Reading again, Romans 8, you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Um, I mean, first of all, walking in the spirit, you feel the fruits of the spirit and you feel that spirit of, of sonship and there's no fear there's just that confident love. I, I just want to point that out as one of the primary descriptions. I mean, and getting back to what I said, the fruits of the spirit, you feel you're overwhelmed by love. You can live overwhelmed by joy, overwhelmed by peace as a tangible experience. Uh, whoa. Overwhelmed by patience, overwhelmed by gentleness. These are, oh, when we're releasing Holy Spirit on someone, I mean, it's it's a shame that people have grown up thinking that, you know, the only time your Holy Spirit is released is someone gets slain and falls over. That's awesome. That's one aspect, you know. Or if Holy Spirit, it's just people have narrowed their perception of what it means to to walk in the Spirit. Um, so I want to, I just want to expand that. Uh, saying, here's so here's more descriptions. 
it's always light, right? My yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is another way to recognize if what the spirit that's happening in here is Holy Spirit and how to keep flowing in that. You wanna keep flowing in Holy Spirit? Keep the atmosphere light, keep it easy. Um, if, you know, using any sort of uh, forceful and pressure language with something is not going to move the spirit along, you know? This is what's so wild is uh, you hear so many preachers who are people are like, wow, they're such a powerful preacher. And all they did was yell at people the whole time. It's like, dude, that is a different spirit. <laughs> it's like not when the Holy Spirit is. Uh, I love when uh, when Kathy Walters was here. She just went off on the thing talking about how it's always light. Like if it's not light, she's like, I'm not interested. I just shut it down. Like I, I'll, I'll close a meeting. If the meeting's getting heavy, I'll just say, oh, time to go home. You know, or or maybe she'll speak a word to change it, but she's like, I'm just not interested in doing anything that's heavy or anything that is difficult. And we're talking spiritually speaking. I'm not saying that you couldn't do a difficult job, you know, or or engage in you know 16 hours of work if you're energized by the Holy Spirit. But it's going to be still feel in your heart and in your spirit light and easy. Boo. So the Holy Spirit, you can live in a lightness, a joy, a fun of heaven. It's life-giving to walk in the Spirit. It's spontaneous and easygoing, yet at the same time, loyal and committed. Um, Because some people here, oh, people think that uh, walking in the Spirit means that they're uh, unreliable. (laughs) You literally have, I've seen that all over the, the world. They're like, oh, he walks in the spirit. That means he's never on time and he never makes his appointments and he never fulfills his commitments. Nope, that's not it either. (laughs) Holy Spirit can be very spontaneous, but at the same time, if Holy Spirit inspires you to speak something and say, I'm going to be there, then you'll be there. Otherwise, you shouldn't have said it and you shouldn't have made any sort of commitment. So Holy Spirit is very faithful to showing up on time if you were inspired by the spirit to make that commitment you're going to fulfill it so that's important because the holy spirit loves uh i mean god's yes is always yes god's not a liar it's crazy to me how many people that are like i'm oh i'm uh, very deep in the holy spirit and yet they always are like changing their words changing their mind um they'll say they'll be someplace but they never are um that's not Holy Spirit, sorry. <laughs> but we're all growing, and there's a lot of grace. I'm not, like, critical of that or anything. I mean, uh, you know, Jesus was late according to what some people's opinions were, but he didn't make a commitment and break it. Other people thought he should have been at a certain place at a certain time. <laughs> and so that's that's a different story. You can you see what I'm saying? But uh, Holy Spirit is very spontaneous. But if Holy Spirit, and, you know, if you're flowing the Holy Spirit and you say that you're going to be somewhere, then that that's, you, you know, good. You'll be there. The spirit is always connected to grace and empowerment. There's no manipulation or insecurity vibe. Holy Spirit makes you feel at home and safe. This is what it feels like to walk in the spirit. I'm just describing and say, wow, grace, empowerment, um, feeling at home, feeling safe. Even if God wants to bring a challenging word, but it will always make you feel more at home even in the midst of it, you know? Like, I've done way less challenging and confronting since I got drunk in the spirit. But at some times it's still good to speak out something and to speak your heart and mind when you feel release and, and even to challenge one another in the body. But it's in the midst of that grace. It says, I love you, I'm for you, I'll never leave you. We're all learning and growing. You're safe with me. I'm not here to criticize you. I'm here to empower you and build you up. So, I want to keep describing uh, some stuff. I don't know. I'm just going off again. Like I just, I'm just, I just want to point to the, uh, put, you know, s- to the wordless realm of what it feels like. Cause it's, so, I, I, it's so key for us as a body to learn to walk in the glory. And, uh, and, and there's been many counterfeit, uh, cl- you know, demonstrations, unfortunately, guys that say they're walking in the glory and yet they're mean to their spouses and people that say they're walking in the glory, but they're always like, 
they call it the fire, but it's just criticism and condemnation. <laughs> you know, people say they're walking the glory or like I mentioned, they're ir- unreliable all the time and they're not, you know, they can't make their commitments or I just want to keep point. I want to point to the real. So men, uh, so here's some stories that someone asked do you, do you have any heavenly visions or encounters to share? I'm just going to share some stuff. I, mean, I don't know what I'm going to get into, but one thing I regularly feel, dude, in the glory is that lifting. You know what I mean? Um, a lifting, dude. Uh, Ruth Ward Heflin would say that. I think I heard Joshua Mills say, I know it's like this supercharging of the atmosphere that literally makes you feel lighter or like you could even fly or like your perspective is all of a sudden like lifted to a heavenly perspective. You're still there and you're seeing stuff sometimes. Most of the time, I mean, but you just feel this, it's a shift. It's just a holy shift and, and it's amazing. And I just want to say that's normal, dude. Begin to expect that. Begin to expect that. If I've, the God's no respecter of persons. If he's done it for me, he'll do it for you. There's a supercharging of the atmosphere that's normal. And in fact, I think it's normal to live in that lifting. Like to be in that, dude, it, you know, it's, it, bleh. and it's real easy for me to go there now, but, but, uh, man i'm addicted to it i'm addicted to it it really is just the perspective of heaven you know but sometimes it'll give you goosebumps and inebriate you and all that at once but it's like it's like the high energy of the atmosphere dude um in the glory or in the spirit uh, i often uh, here's another one i often feel um that pure pure like it's a purity and a preciousness of the moment like everything and everyone is as precious as a newborn baby It's like, you know, when you walk into a hospital and you're like, there's a new baby or you're witnessing that or you're a part of that. It's like there's an absolute, it's like a stunning clarity of the moment and a preciousness that comes, you know. And uh, in the spirit, that can be your normal life. And I I feel that, dude. It's just a, it's so amazing. It's like, um, that's another one where I kind of mentioned like, when we're, you know, when we're getting all whacked out in the spirit and there's somebody that only jokes the entire time, I'm like, that's amazing. But you do recognize the absolute pure preciousness of this moment too. Like not everything is uh, sarcasm or something. <laughs> like I love the joking realm. Don't get me wrong, dude. But I also love when like everybody looks around and it's like we're babies again, you know, Whoa. and everything is just new and and like worth billions of dollars to you. Like every person that walks in is, Oh my God, it's you. (laughs) You know, that, that thing is on you in the glory, dude. Like everything and everyone's as precious as a newborn baby. I don't know. Ah, here's one that I, uh, it was my favorite part of the shack because it was like this. I could see that, uh, what the actor was portraying was, um, something I've experienced, which is, uh, I often feel in the spirit like my belly is doing hundreds of thousands of things at once while I'm completely at still peace. Like I, the glory manifesting, walking in the spirit and having spiritual understanding is knowing that you are one with the omniscient, omnipotent God of the universe is upholding everything at the word of his power without even speaking a word, just vibrating. And our oneness with him, to have spiritual understanding with Jesus is to know that we are walking in the spirit that's upholding everything, that's continue living to intercede just by being. This is what praying continually is. Like This is the revelation I got some years ago. That how do you pray continually? By realizing your union and then just vibrating the frequencies of the Father all over the universe at once. And whether you can see that with your natural eyes, but... I think we've all felt that at times, you know, you're like, and I think that's more and more normal, dude, is just to, you're like, when you come to pray, don't, it's like, don't even think about, or I just encourage you to move to a realm deeper than just thinking about like your list of things. Just begin to vibrate in your union. Oh, there we are, Lord. (laughs) And then don't ever stop, you know, (laughs) and all of a sudden co-creation happens. This is where the miracle realm is easy because you're co-creating with God. And when there's something manifesting that isn't of God, you're just, maybe you speak to it. Maybe you don't. I think there's a realm where you have to say words, but there's a realm greater where you're And this is what I've 
was talking about in the shack where Mac w- walks up on Papa and Papa's just sitting on the porch <laughs> and uh, Papa has her sunglasses on and Mac's like, oh, you're just soaking in some rays? Like, and she's like, you have no idea how many things I'm doing right now. <laughs> There's so much whack on it because she's just sitting in her chair and just leaned back dude, with her sunglasses on. And I've done, I've literally done that sometimes. For some reason in the glory, there's a lot of times I would, I want to actually put sunglasses on. I don't even know why. Like, it's so funny, but (laughs) we used to call them our glory goggles, you know. Like, you're just so drunk. You're like, I think it has to do, what I felt like it has to do sometimes with uh, that, that thing of like going into your secret place. You're like, you're sitting in a secret place. It's the same reason I love hoodies. I love putting my hood up over my head, put some sunglasses on. And it's like, I'm just like. I'm here, but I'm also just like leaned way back, dude. <laughs> and I'm like, if you see me with a hood on and sunglasses, you're like, just know that I'm doing hundreds of thousands of things at once. <laughs> and I couldn't even tell you most of the time what is going on, you know? It's like, it's deep communion with the Trinity, dude. And, uh, it's not so I'm deeper than you. You all can live in this too. It's normal for a, a son and daughter of God. This is what people are like, well, I don't understand how Jesus could be a, a man. What was Jesus doing there in those 30 years? Was he still omniscient and omnipresent? Well, why does everything have to be either or? You know, Jesus as a man in a physical body was still absolutely one with the father and the Holy spirit. And it says in Colossians that all things are held together by him. So Jesus as a man and as, as one of us was still holding all things together. So to have spiritual understanding is to know that it's going to become more and more normal for you to be having experiences at all places in the universe at once and still being here in your chair, maybe, I mean, maybe you'll go invisible, maybe you'll dissolve for a bit, but you're still going to have a physical body because your body is glorious and part of the whole thing. Jesus still has a body, but he's also everywhere at once. And anyway, dude, in the glory, dude, you can feel like you're doing in the walking in the spirit that you're manifesting without lifting a finger, dude. Uh, I mean, it's amazing to hone that in on just one room too. Sometimes just you can just sit there and and manifest your glory and watch how it affects people. We used to call it experimenting on the humans. <laughs> just sit there, and let your glory manifest, and just experiment on the humans. You know, but you're a human too, and it's all good. But anyway, dude, that's a realm, man, and uh, you may think that's a super spiritual realm, but it's just normal. You can flow in it. I don't care who you are. Is this all right? I mean, I'm just walking through stuff, dude. I'm just, I don't even know. I'm just, I just made a laundry list of glory experiences. Another thing I I feel regularly, dude, is a leaning back. Um, To walk in the spirit, to me, there's just a leaning. Like I've always, uh, ever since I first got whacked, I can get drunk at will. I can always get whacked anytime. And and the way that it happens to me is just a leaning in my spirit. I just feel this leaning, like, like, I don't know. I somehow I just describe it like, (laughs) like, like if you can't see me, I'm lifting my hand straight and then I'm just leaning my hand back and it literally feels like in my belly. It's like, there's a man sitting there and, and that man can go as far back in the recliner as he wants to go. (laughs) And dude, all of a sudden, dude, I'm hammered. I, I'm like, oh yeah, like if I'm if I'm not feeling as whacked for a minute, I can be like, oh yeah, let's put let's put that recliner back. I'm gonna lean, dude. Oh. <laughs> a leaning back inside me, like a drunken leaning. I'm much more aware of the Holy Spirit speaking, intoxicating, working instead of me trying. So the leaning back, dude. I just want to point to that. It's a it's a reality, dude. It's a reality. One of my favorites. I mean, the things I just mentioned are some of my literal favorite things in the glory. The lifting, the pure purity, um, that vibration where I'm like doing hundreds of things at once, and the leaning back, dude, are just some of the things. These are all, I'm just trying to describe the wordless. All of this is literally just 
you know, Christ manifesting in me and as me. But when I say those words, a lot of times people don't understand what the heck I'm talking about. So I'm trying to say, what is happening to me? Something real is happening to me. <laughs> Something like experiential. Not I'm not just preaching or not just reciting Bible verses, dude. That's good, but it points to a realm. Other things I've experienced that any one of us can experience at any time is like a warm oil. Walking in the spirit, a lot of times it's to that oil's poured over you or it's poured over your belly, poured over your spirit. Um, you can, sometimes you feel winds, slight breezes, you know. You can feel breezes. I've felt winds in the natural. I've felt winds in the spirit. Uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's just like there's actual, you're like, is there a breeze in here? It's like, some people are like, no. I'm like, I feel something in me, a wind. Sometimes I've felt like a golden cloud. This is one of my favorites too. Usually when the gold dust has manifested at different times, I actually will feel it before it manifests. I'll be like, oh, uh, the cloud is here or the gold is here. I don't know. You just It's some kind of awareness that the atmosphere around me is charged and thick. Uh, clouds. The anointings can feel like a cloud. That's why it's the word cloud is often used for glory in the Bible. Like, the presence is like a cloud, dude. It's ugh. I'm gonna jump ahead to the one that I've, I've kind of already been mentioned, but to walk in the spirit experientially is to move from the head area to the belly area. Uh, I don't want to make some legalistic, you know, rule out of any of these, but again, just trying to put words to the wordless. It's important that you're not uh, just making all your decisions or living your life from here. Um, there's out of, the verse says, out of your belly flow rivers of living water. It's normal for you to begin to feel things coming out of your belly. Um, whoa. Uh, not, it, and, and this is actually how I hear God speak um, now. I, w- the beginning of my walk, I was so used to walking in the natural and where you hear in the natural is from an ear that's up here on your head, you know. Um, but and so actually for many years, it was a challenge uh, just because no one had ever really taught me. I had no spiritual understanding and I'd never seen a lot of examples of stuff. I just uh, but as actually speaking in tongues helped with this because I noticed tongues always come from down here. If you if it's like you could feel something flowing up out of here and I began to see. Dude, God is communing in my belly. Out of my belly are flowing the rivers of living water. And now I commune with the Lord. I actually don't hear lots of words or things. I get deep senses, general, like deep, rich senses uh, in my belly. And I think that's a normal thing. That's where your rivers flow. Ho, oh, this is important, dude. It's important to flow out of your belly. I just want to say it, man. I just want to get it out there. Like, um,. I, there's there's a lot of people that are so desirous of spiritual experiences that they're trying to have them, and uh, you know when you're trying to have them, and it, it, it's always just kind of in your head, and this is where psychoses happen. There's actually a lot of people that think they're hearing from Holy Spirit, but they just went into some sort of psychosis because they're they just ha- are uh, never learn how to operate with spiritual understanding, and Holy Spirit is speaking now to say, take it easy, spiritual experiences will be brought to you as you just rest and lean back in the glory from your belly and watch the rivers flow. And then you will begin to feel not just thoughts, but it's from, it's as it's, it's the very deepest part of your being. God is in there giving you the, even the desires be below the thoughts, giving you the feelings and the senses that turn into thoughts later, but they're, they're huge, they're powerful inclinations, and they flow out of this deep love, out of a, out of a joy that's unshakable, out of a peace. Um, so anyways, but, and that's where I feel the winds, where the golden cloud gets sensed, the warm oil. Um, and that's where, you know, walking in the spirit, a deep sense, a rich sense that everything is going to be okay, overwhelms me out of that place, a deep confidence, um, from deep in the belly area. So anyway. Um, one last one I wanted to mention, dude, is walking in the spirit. And I, 
I have a shukarana. Phil Phil Whitehead says I usually taste Skittles or grapes. <laughs> Just thought I'd throw that in there. I'm tasting the rainbow, dude. But one one I wanted to mention that's drunk like that is walking in the spirit, something I've championed for years and I will not back down on, is it makes you feel high and drunk drunk and high stoned this isn't just a general analogy that we're trying to use to say jesus is better than everything else he makes me high no dude i'm hammered drunk like i feel wasted i feel high without any of the negative effects i mean again we're putting we're giving words to the word list people are like i don't like the word high i'm like listen i don't like words <laughs> but I do. I mean, I've generally come to accept them and appreciate them on a level. But really, none of these words are going to fully explain what we're talking about. But you know what? I want to. We're we're still talking, aren't we? So I'm going to use a word. It's called being high. It's called, I get high. I get drunk. I get whacked. I get wasted. It's not always disabling, but there's always a sense of the the buzz the general buzz and this exceeding like uh just inebriation of positivity and life um uh, my entire body feels buzz like i just always have this amazing tingling it's not always in goosebumps or always as extreme as other times but when i mean walking in the spirit is inebriating it there's just no way around that <laughs> i'm so thankful for that it's like amazing it's way better than i thought i always thought walking in the spirit you're gonna look like you sucked on the sour lemons or whatever it's like the spiritual people you grew up with always just look serene and they almost look like they're like i'm like dude no man they're filled like walk in the spirit jesus was the most life-filled and joyous it says he was anointed with the oil of joy above all his companions like the fullness of joy his love is better than wine la la cate it's not always uh you know rolling around on the floor but sometimes it is and it's okay if it is it's amazing if it is um you don't need to compare your high to different times but just know that and I've said this many times before. It's like if someone was, you know, lit up, uh, you know, a hundred marijuana joints in this room, I don't care who you are. You're going to begin to get high from the smoke. And there may be one in a billion people that's not affected by marijuana. I don't know. I've never met one, but I, the glory is a literal substance like that. You know, walking in the spirit is just as real if the Holy Spirit is manifesting, people get high. It's not, it's not a personality type. So I like to say, in most of these things I'm describing, like I don't believe they're just my personality type. Maybe the way I describe them is, but the experience of that within yourself. You were meant to be filled with life to overflowing the spirit of adoption, Holy Spirit, with love, joy, peace, and patience as a, a tangible, experiential reality. It's not a personality type. You know someone breathes the laughing gas in the dentist chair they're not like oh look at their personality type they happen to be getting affected by the laughing gas no it's you if you're huffing that stuff you're gonna have, that's why they use it it's like it's reliable if it only worked one in a hundred times if it's not working for you you need to find someone who's flowing in the holy spirit to you know to, to just speak the gospel to you and and release that glory on your life and they are out there but and and just and wait because it will work for you and so we were like well it hasn't worked for me yet well listen like i don't understand why there are times where people don't get whacked but i know we're all going there and it's gonna work for you so don't worry about it god hasn't left you there's pro there's just some disconnect in your consciousness which doesn't make you a bad person but it's all gonna you know you're gonna get the revelation if you're not it's gonna be okay but dude it Holy Spirit makes everybody high. <laughs> and I'm so thankful for that. So. Mm. I've had so many fun times with, with this, man. And uh, um, I'm not going to go into lots of specific experiences. I just wanted to point to a lot of general realities, dude, to say they're there and go for it, go for it. Um, I want to mention, this is kind of the last little segment, the last part of the class, but I want to mention at the same time that uh, Holy Spirit does, I kind of mentioned some of the things you're going to feel yourself. Now I want to mention um, some of the manifestations that are going to happen 
um, that do happen that are normal. I'm just going to run through them real fast and then I'm going to come back. But uh, to, to walk in the spirit, to have spiritual understanding means you will speak in tongues. You will uh, understand vibrations. You will have dreams and visions. You will know what it feels like to get a prophetic word. You will sense out of your belly. You will experience times when the temperature changes around you. You will experience times where you see angels, whether that's with your natural eyes or with your spiritual eyes. You have spiritual eyes. You'll see angels. You will have times where you speak things into being by the Spirit, where your words actually create stuff. You will have times where you will hear the thoughts of God um, and recognize them as God's thoughts versus what you thought were your own thoughts or projected thoughts. You'll know the difference. These are some of the manifestations, just, just a few, but I want to I just mention tongues are, are amazing. There's times where I'll be, I mean, I just like I said before, when I first, you know, got the gift of tongues, I didn't feel anything when I prayed in tongues. I didn't feel it. Um, but as it, it's a realm that will open up more and more for you. Um, and if you don't even speak in tongues right now, that doesn't mean you're left out um, or whatever. Just know you have it. You can start right now. Take it whenever you want. You can walk in it. And it's going to keep, if you do speak in tongues, it, it's going to continue to open up more and more and more. Um, you'll feel more within you. Um, I believe it's like a, it, it's, tongues is a communication going on in the spirit. That why we're talking about words are so challenging. Well, tongues bypasses all that. And you're operating at a pure vibrational level with God, which is why, I'm not talking about, I, I, I am a person that believes there are two types of tongues. There is your prayer language or your communion tongues, which is what I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about the other type, which is, you know, using for preaching the gospel to the nations. That's another manifestation, but where you can speak other languages supernaturally. I'm talking about, because a lot of people are worried in their prayer time that I'm, I don't know if I'm speaking a real language. No, what tongues is about is just making sounds and vibrations to the point where, uh, you're just flowing spirit to spirit and you, you feel a communication with your lover king that's beyond words. Um, it's such an intimate and beautiful place and it's, uh, yeah, it's huge and it'll continue to open up. But I want to mention vibrations, you know, um, it is so key for us as we're growing in spiritual understanding to be able to recognize the vibes of a place. Um, not so that you can go in and discern that this place is filled with dark vibes or bad vibes so that you can go in and adjust the vibes according to heavenly reality by just being there or recognizing that there already is a heavenly vibration going on in there. And by you just being aware of it, it affects everyone else that's there and everything else that's there. So learning to, to walk in that, I don't do a lot of teachings on this just because, uh, I mean, I, I'd rather just give you the gospel and you can, you'll get it on your own. Because you know, if you get the if you get the, the the meat of the matter, the other things flow naturally. But you know, I've been preaching the gospel for some years, and there's a lot of people that still just haven't uh, woken up to awaken to walk in their ability to adjust vibrations and atmospheres. And that's big, dude. Um, one of my favorite things I'll just share a little testimony. One of my favorite things about uh, uh, hanging out with uh, Josh and Julie Wildstar is uh, they they understand vibrations. And uh, Julie is one of the most sensitive people to, like, when we were in Guatemala, I just felt, she's like, let's take over this place right now. <laughs> and because she's been doing that in the Holy Spirit for some years, it was like, it was just a wonderful thing to watch as, you know, she just, uh, you know, I could tell she just turned it on. The next person she hugged fell out in the Spirit. The next person she hugged fell out in the Spirit. These were people that never fell out in the Spirit before in their life. They went down into a trance and they laid there for, I don't know how long, a long time. And while the other people were gathering around and saying, what's happening to them? And then everything just got charged. And then people started coming up and wanting us to pray for them and then taking us to their neighbor's houses to pray for others. And then the church next door came over and said, would you, we never met the church. Would you take over our Sunday service? And like the whole town was just affected. And it was just, it's amazing. And, and, there are sons and daughters that are beginning to wake up and be able to walk in that to just say, let's turn this on right now, dude, or let's vibrate. And I, it's connected with tongues, like I said, vibrations. But, and it's not a work, you know. If it feels like work, then you're just going to, you, you got to get a revelation, which you will, you know. But 
you know, you're just sitting there in that confidence and it, and that lightness, as we've described it, it, it runs parallel to everything we described here. You're, you're just walking in Jesus. You're just, what, how did Jesus know the thoughts of everyone around him? How did Jesus heal every person that he, that he, that was brought to him because he knew who he was and he walked in the Holy spirit, just like you can. And, uh, so I'm describing some of that. I, I believe it's being aware. You're aware of what's around you. I love walking into a place and saying, oh, heaven's here. Which, which part of heaven is here? And I'm just going to agree with that. And I'm going to flow in Holy Spirit, which I know is always light and fun and drunk. Oh, there you are, Lord. And then all, you're vibrating and, and you're doing, you know, this is how the universe was created by the words and the vibrations of God the Father speaking and Holy Spirit brooding. And uh, and this is your identity. This is what you can flow in. And so it's big, dude, to begin to, to just recognize those and go with it. Yeah, you could talk about that one a lot. Hey, buddy. Almost done. Shukarana. Dreams and visions are another one, dude. I just want to encourage you. Um, you can't, none of this stuff do you like really make it happen, but you can just flow in Holy Spirit and have dreams. I just, just by pointing it out um, and looking at it or having a little expectation, some of us are going to have more dreams and visions now. Um, maybe you'll have one tonight. Have, have one. Have a vision today. Whoa. A lot of times, I, you know, just talking about it, 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 it's like because it, you know, it's really just your attention um, in heaven, whatever you give attention to. Oh, I want to flow. I want to walk in the waterfalls of heaven. And then, oh, there's the waterfall. Let's go jump in that. Or here's the vision realm. Let's go jump in that by giving it a little attention. I mean, we could talk about healing all day. Just by looking at healing, you'll see more healings. You know, by talking about healing, saying, "By His stripes we were healed." We have the wholeness, and uh, not just some people are like. Well, I tried that. Well, yeah, maybe you talked about it for like a day or something. But make a lifestyle out of just declaring the truth about healing and life and in the same with dreams and visions. These are going to be normal things for you uh, to the point where I love something that's always provoked me. Maria Woodruff Edder said this back in like the late 1800s, early 1900s. She said, without visions, the people perish. <laughs> that just always made me drunk because and then she really believed that she preached on it, but um, no, it's not about trying to get into more visions or stuff. It's just saying that, you know, a normal part of our life is to be having dreams and visions and stuff. And that's going to become more and more normal for you. Uh, it's not God, like, to live without that stuff. So, hallelujah. Um, I talk about prophetic words, man. Uh, it's so key for us. Uh, you know, we've made fun of the prophetic movement at times in the grace camps. But I, I love prophecy, man. I love real prophecy, dude. And... And uh, it's normal for you to know how it feels to get a prophetic word, dude, to get, which is literally just communicating the heart of the Father to someone, communicating the love of Holy Spirit, communicating, um, and that may be just Shabba Baba sometimes, or God loves you, or it may be, you know, really detailed information. I love, you know, who is it? Sean Boltz is always freaking reading people's names, addresses, and social security numbers i don't even know dude and uh you know wh why not in the new covenant it says you know you read stories of the old covenant where it's like who is it elijah they're like he knows everything that's going on in the the king's chambers and stuff you can walk in this stuff dude and i want to keep encouraging one another that it's normal and saying you know if you if you haven't been seeing that a lot that's okay let's let's just encourage each other that it can be normal it can be you this is you well, I'm not really a prophet. That's fine. I mean, I believe people like Sean Bowles are probably called to more of a prophetic thing, but that doesn't mean you can't flow in it either. Like some people are going to have uh, inclinations towards certain things more than others, but everyone can still flow in them at times and as a normal part of their life. Um, oh man, you're going to sense things in your belly. You're going to be led places. You're going to get words out of your belly. That's how I got Nepal, the, the country of Nepal that we've loved going to for years. I didn't even know as a country. So I heard Nepal like in in me, and I, I didn't have the internet at the time. This was 2001. I went to the library, and I looked up the word Nepal and found out it was a country. What? Who knew? Uh, you're going to sense stuff like that. You're going to sense... I'm just kind of going down the list, but temperature changes are a fun thing to notice you a lot of times i've sensed this in worship you just be worshiping and all of a sudden you feel oh it's like it's like cold or real or really hot over here or whatever that and those are things not just for the fun of it although it is kind of fun 
and that's okay too, but like you, what are you saying, Lord? What are you doing? And you can begin to just co-create things and with the Lord according to that. Um, okay, next thing I mentioned, seeing angels. It's going to be normal, dude, to see angels. I see angels on a regular basis. Um, I mostly see them with the eyes of my spirit, which means... Which is a huge shift for a lot of people because they're always looking for stuff with the eyes in the natural, and that's okay. But you, this is why Paul prayed in Ephesians 1 that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened or the eyes of your heart. You have other eyes besides these two. And that's amazing to begin to, to, oh, I can see somehow that there's an angel over there. It's hard to describe. And then sometimes even in the natural, I'll see, I usually just see orbs and stuff. Um, and at first it was like out of the corner of my eye a lot of times but now sometimes i will literally just see freaking like an orange orb or like a blue it's usually blue for me but i'll see like a blue orb standing somewhere i've seen green ones red ones drunk dude i've seen little a lot of times the only ones i've really seen are little ones but i've seen little things that look like fairy things running around it's crazy (laughs) anyway but this is normal stuff dude it's not a you know, Jesus interacted with angels, you know, like, and G- he's the firstborn among many brethren. To walk in the spirit of Jesus, you're going to be walking around and interacting with angels. Now, don't try to do that. Just go with the flow. Go with the flow and expect it as normal. Um, you're going to speak things into being. Uh, that's another normal reality. Uh, not by just trying to say the same words over and over. That's incantation or witchcraft. But just go in with the flow as well. And just sometimes you'll just say words you didn't even know. You're like, why did I say that? I don't understand. You know, as you go in the spirit and you're going to co-create. Um, I think you can call that decreeing prayer as well. But Shaka. I, I think we co-created something the other day. We were, Katie, Katie was like, here comes $500, you know, or whatever. And literally within hours we get $500 for a certain thing. It was pretty crazy. talk about uh what did i say oh the normal day of hearing god's thoughts versus my own projected thoughts and i'll just close with this but um it is normal to hear god's thoughts throughout your being on a regular this is obviously called having a relationship with god (laughs) um but i just want to encourage you at at first and even i know people and i've been tempted with this too people that walk with the lord for years and they still get confused is that my thought or god's thought I just want to say that you, God's thoughts flow up out of your belly and they feel like so authentic and filled with love and, and you, they're your own thoughts. You can own those thoughts. Um, projected thoughts, you don't have any independent thoughts. I'll just put it that way. There is no independent thought for you. There's only two thoughts. There's God's thoughts flowing up out of your belly or there's projected thoughts that are coming from other Sources, I don't even really want to talk about what those other sources are. The projected thoughts will never feel authentic, filled with peace. They'll always come with stress, something you need to do, pressure, condemnation, a spirit of slavery. This is what we talked about in Romans 8. The spirit of slavery, it makes you a slave again to fear. Or the spirit of sonship, the spirit of adoption. Your thoughts, the thoughts of God which I use those as the same because you're one with God, flow up from the deepest place within you and they give you confidence because that's who you are. And they give you the spirit that they'll flow in that spirit of adoption. And so, so to walk with spiritual understanding is going to be so key for every one of us, you know? Uh, and it's going to, it's going to be so key to, know that the spirit of God, the spirit of Jesus are going to interact with us in our thoughts from within as our own and and to not bow to that confusion of is this mine or is this God's thought. Uh, First of all, know that throughout the day, your naturally default is to flow in the thoughts of God. That's amazing. I mean, what good news. He's a good shepherd, so it's easier to hear him than it is to hear anything else. You know, a good shepherd, a good leader is good at leading. (laughs) <laughs> otherwise you couldn't call him the good shepherd we call him the confusing shepherd that I can sometimes hear and most of the time I'm confused and lost shepherd no throughout your day you're, this is part of the good news of the gospel in our union one of my favorite parts of the mystic union that we have is that 
I get to walk in relationship with God throughout the day as a default. It's not something I'm getting into. I'm not trying to hear God. Uh, if I'm trying, it's actually another voice. Whoa! My own thoughts are God's thoughts and they're one flowing from my belly. If there's something that I'm not sure about that I feel like might be someone else's thought or projected thought or something, uh, just ask, does it feel authentic? Does it feel genuine and peaceable, life-giving, loving? Does it feel like the fruits of the Spirit in the deepest part of me? Or does it feel like, you know, the spirit of slavery? <laughs> and all of a sudden, it's easy. So I, I don't walk in projected thoughts very often anymore. Hallelujah. So you're like, so, could someone just give me a prophetic word? Listen, I've been walking in the spirit all day talking to you, so everything I've been saying is a prophetic word. <laughs> and that's what Peter said, you know, speak as if you're speaking the very oracles of God, right? If that wasn't possible as a normal thing, then Peter shouldn't have said it. But it was, it is possible. So, so anyway, man, that's about all I have for today. Thank you for joining. I'm excited to flow in this stuff. I know this is a lot of words I just gave over the last hour. But uh, man, just, just pack it up and pack it in. Uh, and just don't try to make any of these things happen. But lean into that rest that you have as an already completed, whole, saved, and safe being. And, uh, and, and this stuff will become more and more normal. I, I only feel inspired to speak it that our expectation would be raised um, that more manifestation would happen naturally because, uh, yeah, just because that's our inheritance and it's normal. So, so all right. Hallelujah, glory, glory. Um, I'm, I'm going to shut her down here. Thank you guys for joining online. If you have been blessed by this and you, you love what we're speaking, we, I mean, we're going to the nation several times this uh, the next year. We're going to Nepal again. We're going back to Nicaragua. We're doing ministry here. Why don't you consider giving um, financially? Uh, you can, if you're watching online, you can give at thefirehouseprojects.com. Um, slash donate, or if you just go to thefirehouseprojects.com, there's a donate button there. And you can give by any credit card, debit card. Um, if you make checks out, you can make them to the Firehouse Projects, or you can give by cash. We have an offering basket. We do have resources back there as well. But um, Holy Spirit, yeah, so, so consider donating. Uh, man, there's so many amazing uh, things we could do with more downloads of cash. So, hallelujah. Uh, oh, someone's like, it's the image is reversed. I'm just showing my uh, my donation card. There you go. Doesn't really do you any good through the internet, but go to the fire, go to the firehouseprojects.com and click donate. All right, love you all, shakaboomba, and we will uh, we'll see you again next week.